so you know, as as is um, often the cycle in pharmaceutical businesses, um, you know, GSK has um, unfortunately just had a few pipeline setbacks over the years, such that um, you know we're projecting a, a low single-digit ten-year CAGR decline for this new GSK business. So um, part of the rationale behind the split is to really um, focus the company on the new biopharma business composed of pharma and vaccines such that it can really direct very focused investment in both R&D on an organic basis and also to add in um, assets uh, into the pipeline. So now we're dealing now with this situation where Elliot has become involved. What could the angle be for Elliot? What are the different things that you could potentially see them pushing for when it comes to change at GSK? Yeah, you know, since, since the uh, the stake was reported in the press, that was really kind of the only um, thing that we've heard direct in, is that they've taken this stake. Now, there's been a lot of media speculation on what they may want. Obviously, the management change is something that has been talked about um, quite a bit, but, but the board and some major large shareholders have come out in support of Emma. Um, so it doesn't look like that's something that could happen anytime soon. Other suggestions that have been made include not spinning the consumer business, but are perhaps IPOing it or a partial IPO to raise cash to fund deals to supplement the pipeline at the pharma business. Also potentially splitting the pharma and vaccines business. And another one that we've discussed more recently with investors is potentially selling off the more established off patent products of the pharmaceutical business to raise cash. Mm. But all of those, you know, really have, are just speculation at the moment. Well, I guess to understand what may be the optimal strategy from here, it's important to understand what's driven the underperformance of GSK over the last several years. I mean, what do you pin it down to? Yeah, I mean, and, and we put the we published a note on Monday kind of saying what we want to hear from the company. Um, it would seem that perhaps, it, at least to us, it seems that there hasn't really been a lot of focused investment in terms of R&D. For example, the company got out of oncology a few years ago, divesting its business in oncology to Novartis, and you know, in more recent years has made forays back into oncology, did a $4, $4 billion deal to buy a company called Tesaro a couple of years back. And so it just appears that, um, you know, it's unclear what the focus is from an R&D perspective. And what we really want to hear from the company today is what are the therapeutic areas that in which GSK thinks it has a competitive advantage and um, how much is it going to invest in those therapeutic areas such that we can add more assets in the pipeline back into our model? 